So polar reactions here. For the uh, large majority of this course, from now on, we're going to be talking about uh, how we take two molecules and mix them together and get a product or an organic reaction. Um, and we'll learn a lot about the arrow pushing and the mechanism of how the bonds are broken and formed. Uh, but every polar reaction is as simple as this. Some nucleophile, right, or electron source is going to donate electron density in each mechanistic step towards an electrophile, which has an empty orbital and therefore is called an electron sink. So if you can first classify and understand the difference between nucleophiles and electrophiles, then you have a good chance of being able to recognize them and predict the directionality of the arrow. Once you identify them, the arrow goes from nucleophile towards electrophile, or there's a polarity to this arrow. That's why we call it polar reaction. So the nucleophiles, right, or these desire a nucleus, they desire positive charge. They are electron rich, or they serve as the electron source, and they donate electrons towards the sink. Okay, nucleophiles are also known as Lewis bases. And you should have been able to define that term, an electron pair donor, a long time ago. So it's just a new term for Lewis space. Now, be able to recognize examples. Okay, generally they have a reactive lone pair or pi bond. Okay, often they are negatively charged but not always, All right? Those extra lone pairs and negative charges are indicative that they have electron density to donate or they are electron rich starting out. Examples would include an sp3 hybridized oxygen with two lone pairs. That oxygen is a nucleophile. You can imagine there's delta negative charge Another example is not a lone pair, but is this pi electron density. I'll show it here, the orbitals. Pi electron density above and below the plane of an alkene. Okay, reactive pi bonds are also nucleophiles. And that's going to be the nucleophile that we use for the next few weeks. That'll be the common denominators, all the reactions we do for a while are going to start with that CC pi bond. Another example, which we'll see in a minute, would be an anion like chloride with a bunch of lone pairs. So any of one of those lone pairs could be nucleophilic. So once you identified, right, nucleophile, then identify electrophile. Electrophiles desire electrons, or they desire negatively charged particles. So they start out electron poor, or they need to accept electrons and act as electron sinks. So electrophiles are new terms that we now have renamed Lewis acids after, right? And Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors. So electrophiles, have some orbital that needs electrons or can accept electrons. They often have empty orbitals. Um, and they have positive charge or delta positive charge. Okay, they're electron poor atoms. An example would include boron connected to some electronegative fluorines. This boron is sp2 hybridized and has no lone pair, or it has an empty p orbital, because the boron only has six electrons or no octet. It's an electrophile, or something can dump electrons into this orbital. It can take some electron density, act as an electron sink. Carbon 
when singly bound three times will have a formal positive charge and an empty p orbital. Same argument here. This is a carbocation. It has only three bonds or six electrons and no octet. And that MTP will accept electrons from nucleophiles and we're about to do some of those reactions. Okay, um, so let me show you two examples. Uh, the following are not reactions or molecules you have to memorize. Um, these are just example problems where we have to identify a nucleophile versus electrophile. And I'm going to draw the product of this reaction step. So the nitrogen with a lone pair to donate is a nucleophile. The carbon that is electrophilic is the one connected to the bromine that is withdrawing electron density. And that is made more delta positive by that electronegative atom. So the electrophile is over here, this carbon. In arrow pushing, we said the nucleophile attacks the electrophile. In this reaction, if the carbon accepts a new bond, it also has to break an old bond, right? Because the carbon has two hydrogens there and there's no ability of carbon to have five bonds. So if carbon accepts a new pair of electrons, then it will lose an old pair. So this product will now have the bromine displaced or the bromine left. And we have a new carbon nitrogen bond. And the nitrogen has two hydrogens. And thus now has four bonds or is positively charged, right? That counterbalances this negative charge we created. The new bond that we made was with the blue carbon and the nitrogen, where the electrons in that bond right, were formed in this arrow. So now that lone pair is a sigma pair or is a new sigma bond formed. And this is called a substitution reaction and they'll probably give you the arrows for this and you'd be expected to predict the outcome. Notice that it's an intramolecular reaction or it's all within one thing, one molecule. And the nitrogen is one, two, three, four, five atoms from the electrophilic carbon. That's why it makes a one, two, three, four, five membered ring. So you should be able to follow those arrows and turn lone pairs into sigma bonds upon forming uh, new substitution products where this bromine was displaced or the bromine serves here as a leaving group. Another example would be the following compound where this carbon is certainly electrophilic and delta positive uh, because of the polar CO bond dipole and it's being stolen from by the CF3, right? We have induction in both of those directions which means the hydroxide here must be the nucleophile. So the nucleophile hydroxide with lone pair attacks the carbon that's electrophilic. And this time, if you're predicting what bond will break, it will be the pi bond. Because the pi between C and O is weaker than the sigma bond. So we make a new bond with oxygen. Okay, there were three lone pairs on hydroxide, and now there are two on this OH. And there's a new oxygen with three lone pairs and a negative charge. And then you have CF3 and H. So what was one of these three, or the nucleophile, has made a new bond here. The oxygen started with two lone pairs and now it has three in a negative formal charge.
Okay. So once again, identify each half and then make your new bond. But keep in mind that pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds. So if there's a double bond, it will be the pi that breaks first. 